Nora and Alwa. Same what? Dear Mum, sorry we abandoned you, but Karen couldn't hack it. I just don't think it's a very good idea for us to be sat here. I mean, what if she tells me that you helped her? We stopped putting yourself first. My mum could get sent down here. Who's thought that? Say something about it one more time. I'm going to walk up to that desk and I'm going to confess to something. Confess what? I don't know, anything. So if you can't put someone else first at a time like this, I'd rather be in a room with a big, hairy burglar than you. All right. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. Let's get out of here. You're released. Unconditional bail. Swister thinks I'll get off with a fine. Come on. Where to? Not to the pub. Uh, we'll go back to the B&B. &B. That'll do. At the lit A. We're here for her and a mean it. Oh, they're gorgeous. I thought she should have her own pyjamas kept at mine. I was hoping to give them their first go tonight. If you can spare her. Tonight? Here they are. Beth and baby Grace, all ready for you. Hello, precious. Brenda was just asking if she can take Bethany for the night. But well, say if you don't want her to come. We are not planned, have we? Do you want to go to Nana's? Oh, yes. <laughs> Look what Nana's brought you. Well, they've got teddies on them. Look at that. Oh. I bring her back first thing. Yeah, OK. Oh. Shall we go to the swings? Right. All right. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a ring later on. OK. Off we go, then. No, Josh, you haven't lasted two minutes in that water. Well, they could have froze to their front boat. Everything that could have happened just keeps going round in my head. Well, you can stop that. The Jim had not come when he did. He did, and there's an end to it. There's something you've got to learn as a father, Ashley. And that is to stop certain kinds of thoughts in their tracks. Otherwise, every day of your life's full of terrible things that might happen. They might, but mostly they don't. I know for you that's hard to believe. You're me so stupid. No, I'm done. A lesson learned. Think on that. Your dad took the blame as much as he could. So close to coming out. What did he have to go and do all this for? My mum has more milk than that. Look, I know me dad. He'd far sooner do more time and know you were there at the end of it. He thought he'd lost you. One moment of weakness. I never gave up on your dad. And that lorry would have never given up. It'd have worn you down eventually. I turned 46 this month. Got nothing from me, dad. No car, no phone call. He never does. He said the thought of not being with me makes it even harder for him. Well, it would, wouldn't it? Laurie took me for a drive. Out past all the touristy bit to listen to how the sea sounds in the dark. There's nowhere in Blackpool without lights shining on it. He got a little vase of flowers, stuck it to the dash. So what? Your dad loves you. All I'm saying is, the way things are, I get the worst of being married and the worst of being single. Committed we not to show for it. If I get lonely, I can't let anyone close because they get the wrong idea. When my dad gets out, though... If he? your dad serves his sentence, I'll be 50 before he gets out. 50? Come and live with us. Tabby bit's just snapped off. You wouldn't want me around. Of course we would. Wouldn't we, Karen? Yeah, of course. I don't know. Well, what else are you going to do? I don't know that either. Oh. I should have gone to Pet's wedding instead. At least one of us has managed an escape. She'll be sat on some honeymoon beach now, looking forward to the future.
Two blokes in the rover selling Christmas cards. Oh yeah, what was it like? Oh, they were tall, handsome. No, the looking. cards, I mean. <laughs> They were two a particular person, you know, two mum, happy Christmas, two grandson, that type of thing. They have two wife as well. They could get you a couple if you like. I've no wish to purchase cards. Christmas is yet the best part of a month away. Don't rise to it, Roy. It's just when they get to the bit where they ask about your faults and you're supposed to say something like you're over conscientious or you work too hard, but it just seems so false. So what about that habit of yours of picking over things that you can't do anything about? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just so long since I had an interview. Well, if they're not smart enough to see that they're lucky they have you, you shouldn't be working for them. Bev. How did the hot day go? I get more heat out of the ice machine. <coughs> I'll uh, see you later. Okay. So, uh, was he not up to much after all that? Well, he was smart. Funny, professional, and he definitely had the eye for me. So what went wrong? You, your ridiculous conspiracy theory. He couldn't get out fast enough. That was all... You interfered and I lost him. Thanks. Uh, Steve's phone's off. I was going to get him to pick us a bottle or something up. I could do with a drink. Well, I'll go to the offer then. I should go to the pub. No, I don't think I'm quite ready to face a room full of people. No, must be awful for you. I mean, I don't blame you wanting to get away from all these memories here. It's the day's memories that are going to hurt. Watching them drag Jim away in handcuffs. It's both causing everybody all this pain. No, it's memories that stop you moving on, innit? I mean, if it was me, I'd walk somewhere totally, totally fresh. You know, have a new start. Not Blackpool, or Weatherfield, or wherever Steve's dad's next gonna be. But, over a bottle of wine, me and you will think of somewhere, eh? Well, come sorry shopping with you, as long as I get to try one on. <laughs> well, I might feel daft all dressed up like that in some registry office. Oh, no, loads of people get dressed up for registry office weddings. Don't they, Mike? Don't they what? People! They dress up for registry office weddings. I'm more surprised that people turn up for registry office weddings. Any weddings. You should be encouraging her. Come on, tell her to wear traditional dress. Traditional dress? Outside my field of expertise, is that? You and the groom both. <laughs> Gonna have to use the toothbrush glasses. You can't. I'll rinse them out. One of them's bust. Since when? Since I had to throw some or I'd have been ripping you to bits the second you walked through that door. What? You must think I'm as stupid as you are. A nice, cosy glass of wine while Steve's out the way so you can explain to me why I'm best not moving back to Weatherfield. Maybe you're not. Maybe. Maybe I am. But I'll tell you something. My decision will not be based on my son's stupid, manipulative little cow of a fiancé telling me what's best for me. Me, manipulative? It's not me who's got Steve running around risking prison to save your flipping marriage. Steve's a grown man. He makes his own decisions. Some better than others. Oh, am I one of the bad ones, am I? Well, you won't want to come living with us then, will you? Steve is trying to look out for me while I sort my life out. Whose fault is it it needs sorting? Mine. And I am so lucky my son ain't judging me for that. Well, then maybe Steve should open his eyes. You tell him that. Go on, and see how he reacts. Tell him what an idiot his mother's been. Tell him how we should leave her to rot in the mess she's made of her life. And I'll tell you something. You try and come between me and my Steve, and you will lose every time. <laughs> Saving this for me, were you? It's not like either of you. No corkscrew. Painkillers. Tell. I tried phoning in about me dad, but they wouldn't tell me up. Guess they were found wandering the streets looking for us, though. Dad? I'm so sorry I missed the wedding. Steve must have told me. Love, you. you weren't the only one who missed the wedding. And no offence, not the most important one either. It's still about Lynch you're looking at. You changed your mind? No. I think they call it an act of God. Cecil had a heart attack. 
He died this afternoon. Can we go for a walk? It's uh, stuffy in here. Got some fresh air, Mum. I want to make sure our bet's all right. Sounds like you had a hell of a day yourselves. We did, yeah. But nobody died, fortunately. You must be feeling terrible. Well, I have to say in my time, I've been walked all over, slavered over, passed over and all, but killed over. That's a new one on me. I could do with some fresh air myself. I'll tell you as we walk. Come on. Shelley's helping me choose my sari. Yeah, something bright. <laughs> so does that mean I can say an edge down the oil with my sari? Seems to be the hardest one. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. What, can I not tease my fiance? Of course you can. Well, there's teasing and there's ignorance. Ignorance, is it? Listen, if Sunita wants to add in any little extras into our wedding, she's more than welcome to do that. And I mean that. Little extras? What do you mean, sacred traditions? And if she wants to stick some of them in as well, there's no problem. Well, what do you fancy then, eh? Agnabari Naya, Saptapadi? Well, you're not bothering with any of that then, that love. We will. It's taking seven steps, making seven promises. Seven? Kind of like, I promise to be dozy, sleepy, sneezy. Kieran, she's sticking up for you there. Learning, is he? I think mocking's nearer the mark. I'm only kidding. They're still talking about weddings. Don't talk to me about weddings, Mike. I can't even get past the first date, thanks to a certain Deirdre. Why, what's she got to do with it? Got it into her head, my pilot was her pilot. Reckoned I should run a mile. Honey, you saved me the bother. Pilot? Not that Lindsay bloke. Don't you start. No, not John Lindsay, as it turns out. Because if there was even a sniff it was him, I'd keep well away myself. He took Deirdre's life apart, he did. Yeah, I had prison and everything. Well, it was more the everything than the prison. Took away her trust, her self-belief, her dignity, even her will to live. He nearly finished her off. No, I'm not joking. He nearly finished Deirdre off. It's been nice, hasn't it? Well, I mean, apart from... Apart you know, from me nearly killing us all. Don't beat yourself up about it. Well, if the car not the pack, Tim, would have been seeing the illuminations been all days ago. True. I wonder what people are going to make of this day now. Well, they'll make some out of it. They'll be more interested in the escape convict. Be interested in it all. Hey, we've done nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, well, people read into things, don't they? Oh, we'll set them straight. Yeah, well, I think the less said about it, the better. Oh, no doubt my dad'll say so much to set songs like it. <laughs> oh, I alone in a B and B. I say a B and B. <laughs> I'll have to have a way with him. Make sure he don't say anything to give out the wrong impression. Do you know where uh, Bet said your mum could go to Brighton with her? She doesn't know anybody there. Hey, she knows Bet. I want to keep an eye on her. What, in case she cops off again? No, not for that, because she wouldn't. She's been through a very rough time. She's, uh, she's got to start all over again now. I always end up on our own, don't we, kid? One way or another. I think I'd rather be on my own than be married to prison. Jim's a good bloke, and you're loved. Don't you forget that. I know. And you had to sit next to some hospital bed watching the man you were going to marry die. I can't imagine how you're feeling. I'm not soft. I'd not fallen head over heels in love with him like some daft teenager. But I'd be lying if I said I hadn't grown fond of him. He'd fallen for you, good and proper. Do you know what the cruel thing is? Do you know what I lost when he died? It made me realise I'd stopped dreaming. Stopped believing that the world I don't knew to offer me out special. <laughs> That's not true. I'd accepted that I'd live and die with me head in the glass washer. Or pull in a pint for some... Letchy bloke who can barely prop the bar up. And then along came Cecil. Who was that comic who said, the despair I can handle. It's the hope that really hurts. Is it despair you're feeling now? Me? Give over. I'll despair the day all fellas keel over and there's none left in the world. Oh, 
I'm really fond of the sea. The pier, everything. Well, I've got 21 quid in my purse. We could go up there, see if we can win our fortunes on the fruit machines. <laughs> or you could come back to Brighton with me. We could get very, very drunk listening to 70s music. On 20 quid? Hey, at my pub, no problem. I could dock your rounds at your first wage packet. I could do with a decent bar, mate. Used to come here loads when we were kids. Well, there's so much to do, isn't there? Go on rides, drift off in boats, and ground in police stations. That train goes in less than an hour. Right. I'm going with her. To Brighton. You sure about this one? She's sure, Cocker. And you're coming with me to help me get my stuff out of the black dog. Come on. Come on. So, uh, didn't fancy Weatherfield after all then. If you think my decision is out to do with you, you're wrong. I don't care what your decision's to do with, so long as it's made. Karen, there's no point you and me being enemies. We should try and get along, if only for Steve's sake. You should have thought about that before you started slagging me off. Well now, hold on, Maya. Let me just check my busy social calendar. Uh, lunch tomorrow afternoon? I'd love to. Yeah. I'll be at the shop. Yeah. Bye. You know, I would have had you past the lunch stage by now. Would have thought you would have made it in the evening. Some of us like to get to know the people we're seeing, not make ignorant guesses as to who they are. You mean you haven't slept in here yet? That's not what I said. Of course not. Red wine? Ah, uh, please. On me as an apology. Help. I hadn't realised what you went through with this Lindsay fella. Well, not what it must have felt like. I didn't mean to scuppy your date. Oh, me neither. It was just such a coincidence with this pilot thing. I was taking it out on you because I should have played it differently, and I'm sorry. Well, thank you. Apology accepted. You can change your mind, you know. I know. And that's what makes it okay for me to go. Because I know if anything goes wrong, I can always come knocking on your door, can't I? Well, make sure you do. You saved our marriage and I'm grateful. I'm sorry I put us all through this. Oh. You do the same for me. When I've got a marriage to save. Which isn't far away, it's Valentine's Day. You will come, won't you? What does Karen think? Well, she knows I'd want you there. Say you'll come or I'm not letting you go. Of course I'll come. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I got you a little souvenir. Actually, I, I bought it before. It was meant to be a joke. Kiss me quicker. By heck, the effect I have on fellas, it would have to be quick before they drop dead. Let's have it back. It gives our action. No, no. I shall wear it tonight. Might just get some offers. I'm sorry where things turned out. You deserved better. Deserved? Don't you start talking in the past tense to me, Fred Elliot. There's now past tense about Bet Lynch. Not now. Not ever. I'm not done with this world yet, whatever it tries to throw at me. Got to wear it. Bye-bye, Cruella. <laughs> Keep your eye on this one. Reminds me of me a bit. Try going blonde, love, trust me. You'll never look by. <laughs> Don't miss your train, eh, Bet? Come on, Liz. Party going in Brighton. Got our name on it. Fred, 
Could you give your lift back to the caravan park? See how Ashley is. He's all right. Shaken, but not stirred. You all right? Never better. Me and Todd might have a surprise for you tomorrow morning. Yeah, so you be a good girl for your nana. All right, say goodnight to Todd. Say goodnight. Night, night, sweetheart. Yeah, night, night. Right, put Nana back on. Ah, yeah. All right, then. I'll see you first thing tomorrow. OK, bye. I wonder if our Jason's doing the dancing elf at the grotto again. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bethany was dead excited. There again, so am I. It's weird when she's not here. She's in good hands. Yeah, I know. Oh, your daddy loved his teddy pyjamas when he was little. My teddy Jim Jams. <laughs> oh, aren't you alike, eh? Two peas in a pod. Now, shall Nana take your photo to go on the board? You and Daddy together. Daddy will look down from heaven and he'll see that and he'll smile. <laughs> you and Daddy together. Karen, you're going to have to learn to get on with my mother just a little bit more. Yeah, I know. But be easy in Ashton Bryan. No, I mean when you see him. What, with my bionic vision? No, with your normal vision because she's coming to the wedding. To my wedding? Our wedding. The biggest day of my life, Steve, and you've invited her. She's my mother. Yeah, and I'm going to be your wife. So, uh, did she invite herself, did she? Sneaky cow? No, I invited her. She's going to do something to ruin it out of spite. No, she won't. No, you're right, she won't. Should I tell you why? Because she isn't coming. Well, it's too late, I've invited her. If she goes, I don't. And that's your choice, Steve. Over on ITV2 next, it's Saturday's Pop Idol replay, where five become four. Back here, the new doctor gets off to a very shaky start in the Royal next. Then, it's Foyle's War. You're with us, or you're against us. Couldn't you help me? Finding out who killed him would be a good start. That's at nine.